I am very excited to be doing this video for you today because I was able to accomplish almost $4,000 in gross sales on the Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari platforms as a part-time reseller in the month of July, which is infamously known in the reseller community as summer slowdown month. So a little bit about myself, I am a full-time nurse leader in the hospital, which is almost always over 40 hours a week. I have two small children, ages nine and six, and for those of you that have been following my YouTube and Instagram, you know that my basement flooded towards the beginning of June and I have been living in a state of chaos. So my basement ended up needing waterproofing inside and outside, which was a big financial stressor. To be honest, I am super grateful to have my reselling business, but the concrete I have a little buddy here. The concrete needed to cure. And so I've had to wait another, uh, like over a month to have the reconstruction done because the space was newly renovated to begin with. So I have been living in a state of what I like to call organized chaos, but guys, I was still able to accomplish these amazing gross sales. So today, why I'm excited is I'm not only going to be sharing what sold for me the first half of July, 2021, but I'm going to share with you the strategy that I have developed to accomplish this and the tool that was absolutely integral to this success. So if this sounds beneficial to you, like it would be valuable for your reselling business, please stick around because I guess we're going to get right into it. So if you are new here, my name is Nicole Wills. Welcome to my channel. Like I said, I am a part-time reseller and I put out consistent reseller content pretty much every week. So if this sounds interesting to you, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing and click that notification bell so you will be notified anytime I release a new video. Also, if you appreciate the time that it took for me to put this content together, please take a quick second and give it a thumbs up as it not only helps me, but it also helps YouTube to recognize that people are enjoying this content with the hopes that it'll push it out to a broader audience and other people will get this learning as well. So this what sold is going to be broken into a two part series, basically because there is just some really important information I want to share outside of the what solds. And also as I put the spreadsheet together, I quickly realized that I had almost a hundred sales in the month of July, which is great for me as a part-time reseller, but it was just too much to fit into one video. So part one is right now. Part two will be the second half of my sales and I will be sharing a second tool that is as equally as important as what I am sharing today. So let's just jump right in. And guys, if you are not interested in learning anything about this strategy or the tool that I'm going to share today, I will have chapters in the description below. You can easily go down there and just skip right to the what souls. If that is all you are here for, that is perfectly fine. So number one, the strategy and guys, I owe this to Sarah Styles LLC. So if you are not subscribed to Sarah Styles LLC on YouTube, you definitely should be. She is someone who really believes in working smarter, not harder. She believes in really tracking on your data and analytics. She is an expert on that. And and she is all about gaining efficiencies in your business. She really strives to work part-time hours and really enjoy her time with her family and work on her wellness and do other things she enjoys, but she really has a goal of achieving full-time sales. So working part-time and achieving full-time sales. So if you are not subscribed to her channel after this video, please go ahead and do that. She is absolutely amazing, but I owe this strategy to her. The strategy is, and guys, I know this sounds so simple. So guys, what she does in her life is she's like me. She has a lot going on, small children, the whole thing. And what she does is she does batch work when it comes to taking photos. So she has a chunk of time. She dedicates it to taking photos and then gets those uploaded as drafts into eBay, Poshmark. I don't know where she starts or how she cross lists or any of that, but it really is about taking a chunk of time that you have in your week and just going 
I'm gonna say it, balls to the walls with your photographing and getting those items uploaded as drafts into your reselling platform that you start with. And then setting a realistic listing goal based on the time that you have throughout the week. So guys, previous to this, I was killing myself in my reselling business. I told you guys all the other things that I have going on. So what I would do is I would have a chunk of time and I would just go crazy and photograph and I would edit and then I would just list, 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 list. And then I would lose steam and motivation towards my reselling business. And then I was not listing consistently. I would go long periods of time because it would take me a while to build back up that momentum and that steam. So what I have started to do, and I have set a listing goal for myself, guys, of three Poshmark listings a day. So I use Poshmark as my primary listing source. So I do the batch work when I have time. I upload all the photos into draft format. I don't even start titles or anything like that. It's simply just the photos. And then throughout the week, I get up before my children are up, before my partner is up, before I go into the hospital, I will complete three of those drafts, which it doesn't take me a long time to fill out the rest of the Poshmark template. And then I will cross list those three Poshmark listings to eBay and Mercari. So it sounds like I'm doing three listings, but I'm actually doing nine listings a day across all the platforms that I sell on and each of my platform is getting activity. So while nobody can tell you exactly what the algorithms are within these platforms, we know they love consistency and we know they love activity. So that is my process every single morning and guys, it has transformed my life. I started this back in June and my sales have been up. They have been great for the month of July and I am conserving so much energy and keeping that consistency going. It is just a way to take my crazy life and make it so manageable. So am I absolutely perfect at that? No, I'm not. There are days when my day completely blows up and maybe I don't get to it and the next day I have to do six or things are just too crazy and I have to let it go. But that is the outlier. The majority of the time I have been able to accomplish this and it is paying off. Now, the second thing I want to mention is the tool that I am using to accomplish this. And guys, it is List Perfectly. So I've had List Perfectly for quite some time now. I want to say at least a year, if not close to it. And I have always loved List Perfectly, but it was always really overwhelming to me because of the workflow I was following. Like I said, I was just going crazy when I had a chunk of time and just trying to get everything done, right? And so after I switched to the strategy of, you know, doing my batch work with photos, getting them loaded into drafts, and then consistently setting a listing goal and following that goal throughout the week, I am using List Perfectly to accomplish this goal and it has made using List Perfectly so much more effective within my daily life. I absolutely love it guys and to this date I really haven't shared much affiliate info at all on my channel. I have had some brands reach out to me. I have tried different products and none of them has been as amazing, not even near as amazing to list perfectly. So guys with list perfectly, I believe you can cross list on 12 different platforms and I will pop those up here. They have several different plans. I forget what the lower tier plan is, but then the mid tier is the business plan. And then they have the pro plan. I have tried the business plan and the pro plan. And I do plan on doing a video about list perfectly, which I will share more of this information. But for my purposes, I am actually back to using the business plan, it is meeting all my needs within this workflow, within this strategy. When I cross list in the morning, I have time myself and it takes me approximately 30 seconds to cross list a listing from Poshmark to Mercari. And then you guys know anybody selling on eBay knows, or you're avoiding selling on eBay because you know how many fields you have to fill in. So there are a couple fields I still have to fill in, but I have time myself and I can cross list from Poshmark to eBay in under one minute per listing. 
morning. So you guys, I am not spending a ton of time on cross-listing in the morning. I mean, literally my routine probably takes me 20 to 30 minutes and that's to get nine listings up. So that is not bad at all. If you are interested in list perfectly for efficiency's sake, or maybe you're not even cross-listing to multiple platforms, but you're really looking to level up your reselling business, take it to that next level. I will put my code below. It is soul inspired and you can pick any plan and get 30% off of your first month if you want to give it a try. The business plan that I use is $49 a month and I think that can seem steep to some people, but guys, as I go through my what solds, look how much is selling on eBay and Mercari for me. And if you've been watching my what solds, you know this is drastically up from what solds that I have done before now that I am into a groove with cross-listing with List Perfectly. So what I'm saying is this service pays for itself pretty quickly if you can get into a groove and then you can really start leveling up your business on these other platforms if you stick with it. So I just wanna promote that, that strategy and that listing goal may look completely different for you. It may be less, it may be more, but it is working for me and it was too good not to share. So I'm gonna get specifically in what sold for me the first half of July, but guys, in part two, I'm going to be sharing another tool that has totally worked with my strategy and list perfectly in tandem to really knock my sales out of the park. So let's get into the sales. So guys, high level summary for the month of July as a whole, I sold 97 items. We're going to go over about 50-ish today and you will see that my sales have increased on eBay and Mercari. There are pockets of time when my sales have been on fire and I've had some really high ticket sales on those platforms. I'm really excited to share them with you if you can't tell. You are going to see some smaller margin sales mixed with some very large margin sales. The large margin sales I truly believe are because of what I just shared with you. The smaller margin sales are from the tool I am about to share with you in part two. And really one of the features of this tool is it allows you to truly truly send bulk offers with a click of one button. You can set it to send bulk offers for items that have been listed for a certain amount of days. You determine and your offer to all of those items can be whatever percentage. So what I did guys is I went and I looked at items that have been sitting for an extended period of time and I just sent steep offers on all of them, just trying to move some sale inventory. So you will see that and I promise I will share more about that tool and I might even do a little demo in the next What Sold. It is so, so good, but it's just too much to share today. We have another little buddy. We're just gonna have to deal with little buddies today. That's all I have to say. I can't wait to get back into my basement, my office space. All right, so let's start with July 1. So July 1 kicked off with a sale of a multi-quantity listing in my closet that you guys have likely seen before. It is this new with tags, a new day, green ruffle top in a size medium. Like I said, this is a multi-quantity listing in my closet. This was an item that I was just looking to move along. It is from a Wholesale Ninjas case pack palette with Target merchandise that I purchased last summer. That uh, method of sourcing I found is just not for me, but I am still moving inventory consistently from that haul. So this top sold for $14. My cost of goods was $2, and so I ended up profiting $9.05. The second item to sell on the first was this Lily Pulitzer Chipper Cotton Bermuda Shorts. They were listed for approximately three weeks and guys, Lily Pulitzer, especially in the summertime, moves pretty quick for me. It sold for an offer of $30. This was an item that I sourced from Uptown Cheapskate, a buy sell trade store for $7.15 and so I ended up making $14.39. The next item to sell on the first was this Portland Leather Goods Modern Passport Holder. This was only listed for about a week. So guys, I have put out a couple different videos about Portland Leather Goods mystery boxes, and I've gotten either four or five of them now. And the intent has been a little bit different with these. So I included the sales in my gross sales 
but the intent has been, I bought them with my non-business personal money to keep a couple pieces from each mystery box because I absolutely love the company. I love their products uh, with the intent to resell and get those products for free. And guys, I have accomplished this and have even made a little bit of income from those mystery boxes. So with that, I am not including them in my cost of goods nor my net profit because that really wasn't the purpose, but I do want to share these products with you guys because they sold like fire for me. I have sold the vast majority of them and fairly quick. So this passport holder sold for $28, like I said, from a Portland Leather Goods mystery box and selling really well. Next on the first, I had a lot of sales on the first. I sold this Free People She's All That alpaca wool sweater in a size small. This has actually been listed since December and guys, this was a piece that I just wanted to get moving along. Free People, the shoes are still selling really well for me, but the clothing just tends to sit. I find the market to be very saturated, so I barely ever, ever, ever pick up Free People these days unless it is the shoes. So this sweater sold for $25. I got it at Style Encore during a clearance event for $12.37, and so my net profit was $7.00. 63 cents. Glad to see it moving along. Same with this next piece that I sold on the first. You guys can tell I sent out some bulk offers. Uh, it is this Anthropology HD in Paris. It's the Hanalei floral button down top. This has been listed for over a year. I would never purchase it today. It was probably a bad buy, but guys, I purchased this off of Poshmark during the beginning of the pandemic for around $4. It sold for $26, and so I ended up profiting $14.34. The next sale on the first was on eBay. It was this pair of Sam Edelman studded wedge gladiator sandals. They had been listed for about six months. They sold for $30. The buyer paid a flat rate of shipping of $8. That's typically what I charge for shoes outside of boots. I purchased these at Style Encore for $11.36. And so I ended up making $13.33. Guys, these are some of my smaller sales, but you'll see I had some really big sales. So stay tuned for those. I just started off a little soft. I think I really started off just sending a bunch of bulk offers in the beginning just to, to move some inventory. So this next sale on the first was a really good one. I was excited. It was also on eBay. It was this pair of Sarah Flint Simone Italian leather sandals. They had also been listed for about six months. I actually sold these uh, prior to, but I had the size listed wrong and I caught it before I shipped it and I had to cancel the order, but they sold for $79.99 and I purchased these at my Style Encore a couple clearance events ago for $6. So the buyer paid $8 shipping and I made $61.74 off of these sandals. So guys, Sarah Flint was a brand that was not known to me, but during this clearance event, this is how research comes in anywhere you go, but specifically at Buy, Sell, Trade, I looked up the brand Sarah Flint and was shocked at how much they sold for and how much the reseller comps were. And so I actually ended up selling a black pair as well for at least this amount, maybe even a little bit more. So so six dollars into sixty one dollars and seventy four cents not bad right so july 2nd was my only no sales day of the whole month i'm not sad about that at all so let's just move on on the third i had a sale on ebay it was this j crew tropical linen blend one shoulder shift dress i think it was actually j crew factory this had been a multi-quantity listing in my closet they've been listed for a year plus so happy to see them moving along the dress sold for 28 dollars and 99 cents this was an item that i snagged during the pandemic off of poshmark for around six dollars a piece the buyer paid five dollars shipping and so i ended up making eighteen dollars and 42 cents off of this dress the next sale was a really great sale. It was on Mercari. So guys, you will notice a trend with Mercari for me. I am tending to sell higher value bags on there versus other things. I mean, I do sell other things, but that is really a trend that I am seeing, which I'm not sad about. So the sale was this Kate Spade floral pup 
crossbody bag. It had been listed for only one week. It sold for $68 and the buyer did pay shipping. So I sourced this at my Style Encore. I was willing to pay up for it because it was in new condition. It didn't have any signs of wear. I paid $31 and so I ended up making $27.93. I had one sale on July 4th. It was sold on eBay and guys don't get too excited because it actually ended up being one of a few returns for fit. So it was this pair of Anthropology Hey Hey Rory shorts. They had actually been listed for over a year, so I was happy to see them moving along. They sold for $20. They had been listed so long that I still had free shipping listed on them. But yes, uh, they are not included in my net sales because they were an eBay return for fit. The next sale was on the 5th. It was also on eBay and this was an item, oh my gosh, in the beginning, there's so many of these items that have been listed for well over a year that was just a really, I don't want to call it a bad buy, but it's not something I would source today. I sourced it off Poshmark out of desperation at the beginning of the pandemic. It was the Zara green mini skirt and I did offer free shipping. So I ended up just recouping my money and not really making a, uh, a good profit on this. I made $4 and 67 cents because like I said, I did offer free shipping, but happy to see it moving to a good home and recouping my money. Honestly, guys, I don't buy skirts at all. I would love to know if you have luck with selling skirts but they just sit for me people do not buy skirts for me i had two sales on july 6th the first one was this cool han pink leather crossbody bag it had only been listed for about a month it sold for an offer for 20 dollars. i remember the feedback the buyer was really happy with it which I always love. Um, this was an item that I sourced off of Style Encore during a clearance event for $8, and I only ended up making $5.54, but it was still a fun item to sell. I probably wouldn't buy it again, but that's how you learn. The next item that sold was on the 6th as well. It was on eBay and it was an international sale to Canada. It was this BC BG Max Azria. Uh, it was the Arnoldy color black dress. It had only been listed for about a week. It sold for $20. And this was an item that I sourced from a thread up 200 pound bulk rescue box. For those that have been watching, you know I have a couple of videos on those. If you have not seen them, I will definitely link in the description below. But this this was an item that I bought for $1.40 in that bulk box. So I ended up making $14.33 and because it was international and via the global shipping program, guys, I do use that. The buyer did pay shipping. So I had four sales on July 8th. The first sale was this Piazza Sempioni Virgin Wool Blend Knit Jacket in a size small. This had been listed since March, so I was happy to see it moving along, but it did sell for $40. I believe it might've actually sold for full asking price. This was also for my thread up 200 pound bulk box. So I only paid $1.40 for it. And so I ended up making $30 and 60 cents off of this uh, jacket. The next item to sell was also from a thread up 200 pound rescue box. You guys will see a little trend here. It was this NSF and I believe that is a brand that is sold on Revolve. It was a cashmere wool blend ribbed poncho sweater. So I knew that type of blend was going to sell. It had actually been listed since January and did get quite a bit of attention. It ended up selling for an offer of $40. I paid $1.40 for it and so I ended up profiting $30.60. The next two sales on the 8th were on eBay. This first one was a pair of Sorel Major Brown Mid-Cap Leather Moto Boots. They have been listed for a couple of weeks and got quite a bit of attention. They sold for $50. The buyer did pay shipping. I probably charged $10 because it was a pair of boots. This was an item that I actually sourced off of Poshmark, not meaning to make a profit. I sourced it in a bundle and my goal was to sell to pay for the other items in the bundle. I did end up making $11.76, so not upset about that. The last item to sell on the 8th, like I said, also on eBay, was this pair of Dansko Demetra leather cut out heeled sandals. They had only been listed for a couple of weeks, and you guys know Dansko sell well for me. 
They sold for $45. This was an item that I sourced from Style Encore for $21. The buyer paid $8 shipping. And so I ended up making $16.74 off this pair of dance goes. We are to July 9th. So July 9th, I sold the Sperry Topsider Nubach Waypoint Penny Loafers. They were in a size seven. They had actually been listed since April. They sold for an offer of $25. This was an item, one of the few um, hauls I got from Jomar. I don't typically source from companies like that anymore, but I only paid $4 for them. And so they ended up making me a profit of $13.54. The next item was a great sale. It was also on the 9th. It was on Mercari. It was this pair of Keen Terradora 2 hiking sandals. They were only listed for a few days. They sold for my full asking price of $54. This was an item that I sourced from Uptown Cheapskate for $7.15. And so I ended up making $39.58 off this pair of Keen sandals. All right, this next sale was my absolute best sale of the month and one of my best sales year to date. Super excited about it. So this was a sale on eBay and it was this gorgeous, I want to say that like three times, gorgeous, Tory Burch. It was the Carter Slouchy Hobo Bag and Matching Wallet. This was only listed for a couple of days and guys, it sold for $250. I saw this item at Uptown Cheapskate, or should I say items, and I had to purchase them. They were sold separately, but in total, I purchased them for $86, which I knew was paying up, but I knew, I knew that these items were gonna make me an excellent profit. So I paid a combination of $86 for this bag and this wallet. I did offer free shipping on this just because the cost was so high. I thought I could eat the shipping. I don't offer a lot of free shipping these days on eBay, but this was an item where I offered it. And guys, I ended up making $132.94. Oh, such a good sale, such a good sale. One for the books, right? Very grateful. So this next sale on July 10th was actually a bundle sale of two Lily Pulitzer items. The first one was the Captiva Tunic uh, Zebra I Heard You. I love that. I Heard You, H-E-R-D. Both of these items have been listed for about a month. The second one was the Lily Pulitzer. It was a beaded caftan swim cover-up in a size extra small. Both of these items have been listed for about a month. So this bundle sold for $90. I sourced the first item from Uptown Cheapskate and the second item from Style Encore for a total of $35.59. So I made a total of $28.96 off of this Lily bundle. I had one sale on July 11th. It was this pair of Anthropology Point Toe Mary Jane Kitten Heels. They had been listed since May. They sold for $40. This was an item I sourced at Uptown Cheapskate for $14.29. And so I made a profit of $15.25. I had four sales on July 12th. The first one was this brand new pair of Merrill high top waterproof hiking boots. They were a women's, although I got these in a men's thread up rescue box. Um, I did a video on it. And if you guys haven't seen that, that's another one I will link in the description below. They were only listed for a week. I figured they would sell fast. Uh, that is what Merrill is known for, their hiking boots. If I buy anything outside of hiking boots, they tend to sit, but hiking boots do tend to sell faster for me. They sold for $50. And so in that haul, I paid $3.41 per item and I ended up profiting $34.13. The next item to sell on the 12th was not as exciting, <laughs> but it was another multi-quantity listing I had from a Wholesale Ninjas Case Pack Palette with Target Merchandise. It was this A New Day plus size blouse. It was in a size XXL and it sold for $10. This is an item that I probably sent out the steep offer for just ready to move along. I only paid $2 for it and so I made a profit of around $5. The next two items to sell were on eBay and they were both Portland leather goods items. You guys are gonna see that pick up here. The first one was the set of handmade brown leather coasters. I actually have two sets. I still have one listed if you're interested, but this one was only listed for a few days. It sold for $25. And like I said, I got this from the Portland leather goods mystery box with the intention to sell, to make my money back and keep items. So not including them in my net profit. 
Then next item to sell was a bigger one. It was this Portland Leather Goods Gray Distress Classic Leather Tote. It was one of their size small totes. Um, had only been listed for about a week, sold for an offer of $80 and also from one of my mystery boxes. I had a couple sales on July 14th. The first one was this Universal Thread Floral Wrap Rubble Sleeve Dress. For those of you that have been watching my what sold, you're probably so tired of this listing. I had so many of these and I am nearing my last few. They are multi-quantity listing in my closet from Wholesale Ninja's Target Case Pack Palette. Sold for $18, I paid $2 and made a profit of $9.94. The second item to sell on July 14th was this Anthropology. It was a Maeve navy blue textured sleeveless top. It had been listed since March. This item sold for $24. Guys, this was an item I sourced at the Style Encore. It was the 90% off clearance event, so I only paid a dollar for it, and I ended up making $15.74 off of this top. The next two items to sell on the 15th were both Portland leather goods items. The first one was this leather zip pencil case. It was only listed for a couple of days. It sold for $25 and like I said, it was from one of those mystery boxes. The second item was a Portland leather goods handmade blue glasses case. It's the second blue glasses case. They're not available on the website that I have sold. Once again, only listed for a couple of days. It sold for $30 and also so from my mystery box hauls. Also on the 15th, I sold this pair of Dansko Maria Milled Nubach ankle boots. When I saw these, I knew they were gonna sell well and sell fast. They were in a size eight and a half. They sold in about one and a half weeks for $70. They were in new condition. And uh, I paid $17.59 for these at my Uptown Cheapskate. And so I made $35.95 profit. So moving on to July 16th, I had a great sale on Mercari. This was the Kate Spade Odette Jackard Satchel. I can never say that, Satchel, 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 I think. Um, it was only listed for a few weeks. It sold for $87. Guys, this was an item that I got at my Uptown Cheapskate. I was willing to pay up $44 and I made $31.48. Guys, when I pay up for these types of bags, I am always looking when I pay up to one, sell them quickly and to make a profit margin of at least $20. Oftentimes I will make more, sometimes a lot more as you can see, but I always shoot for at least that $20 profit margin with these types of purchases. The next item to sell on July 16th was this pair of Jack Rogers Nantucket thong slip-on sandals in a size eight. They had been listed since May. They sold for $40 and these were from a Thread Up Shoe Rescue Box. So I got them for around $6 and I ended up profiting $26 for them. The next two items were a bundle sale on Poshmark. They were both Portland Leather Goods Mystery Box items. They were both makeup uh, cosmetic bags. The one item had been listed for a month. The other one was only listed for three days. So this bundle sold for $50, like I said, out of those mystery boxes, not counting in my cost of goods or my net profit. The next item to sell on July 17th was this pair of Key Incognito Navy Tortoise Oversized Glasses. You guys might recognize this uh, item if you have been watching my What Solds. It is a multi-quantity listing in my closet. I believe I have one more pair left after the month of July. These sold for $25. I sourced these off of Jomar for $10 a pair and I ended up making $10. Guys, Key Sunnies used to sell like fire for me for like anywhere between 45 and even $60 if I could get them new with tags. I used to get them in really large quantities from B&G Trading and I have made honestly thousands of dollars from Key Sunnies. And frankly, if I could get them for a low enough cost of goods, probably $10 or under, I would continue to buy them, but they're just not selling the same as they used to. The next item to sell on the 17th was another Portland leather goods item. It it is this mini envelope wallet. This color was not available on the website. It was only listed for four days and sold for $28 like I said, from one of the mystery boxes. The next item to sell on the 17th was this pair of two stainless steel spill-proof Dino water bottles. Uh, they sold for 
full asking price of $20. This is a multi quantity listing in my closet from a wholesale ninjas case pack palette from target merchandise. And so I ended up paying $4 for both of them and making a profit of $12. The next sale on the 17th was this pair of J crew red and blue leather piped loafer mules. They were only listed for about a week. They sold for $35 guys. I snagged these at a yard sale for $1. I was super excited and I've actually gotten quite a few pairs of yard sale shoes lately for a dollar to two dollars and they're doing quite well and i ended up making 24 dollars and 54 cents off of this pair of j crews the next sale was on the 17th and was another pair of j crew shoes so it was this pair of suede cage gladiator sandals with pom-poms they were just really fun and bright and colorful in my opinion these have been listed since june they sold for 30 dollars and this was a pair of shoes i snagged at a style encore clearance event for five dollars and 40 cents it had to have been the 80 or 90 percent off and i ended up profiting 16 dollars and 14 cents off of this pair of sandals the next two sales on the 17th were on ebay the first one was another portland leather goods it was the black and tan zipper toad it was another size small and guys this was a color combination not found on the website it sold within a week for 95 dollars and once again from one of my portland leather their goods mystery boxes so the second sale that i was referencing on ebay was this pair of j crew ryan red leather loafers and guys i said it in my last video where i took you guys sourcing shoes with me at style encore j crew loafers in bright fun colors are selling really well for me so these were only listed for a week they sold for 45 dollars i sourced these at uptown cheapskate for nine dollars and sixty cents the buyer did pay eight dollars shipping and so I ended up making $28.90 off of these J Crew loafers. Okay, I had two sales on July 18th. The first one was this Eliza J, which is a brand sold at Nordstrom Nordstrom Rack. It was this pink ruffle shift dress in a size 12. This had been listed since April. It sold for $33. This was from a 200 pound thread up rescue box. So I only paid $1.40 for it. And I ended up making $22.54. The second item to sell on the 18th was this Free People Not Your Brother's military jacket in a size extra small. So this sold for $45. This was an item that I got at Style Encore during a clearance event for around $12. And so I ended up making $24 off of it. I had two sales on the 19th. And remember guys, we're only going to the 20th here. I'm only going to go to the 20th and then I'll share my other half of my sales uh, in part two. So on the 19th, I had a sale on Mercari. It was this Portland Leather Goods pencil case in the color Nutmeg. So I believe this might have been one that was available on the website in this color, but not in this text. Texture. So this was listed for only one week. It sold for $28. And like I said, guys, this was from one of my mystery boxes. The buyer did pay shipping on that, by the way. The next sale on the 19th was on eBay. Oh, this was a great sale. I was so happy for it. It was this pair of Tory Burch Patty Wood Platform Wedge Sandals. It guys, I think I've said it before. I find that the Tory Burch one, the bags and the leather uh, ballet flats sell really well for me. Sandals tend to sit. However, with these, when I saw these at Style Encore, I just looked at them. One, they were in like new condition and I just, something in my gut told me they were gonna sell fast and they did. They were only listed for about a week. They sold on eBay for $100. The buyer did pay $8 shipping. I was able to source these at Style Encore for $36.18. Like I said in my gut, I knew that I could pay up and that they would likely sell faster. And so I ended up making $50.86 off this pair of Tory Burch sandals. What I would say is just be very strategic. I definitely calmed and did my research before purchasing those. I would not purchase Tory Burch sandals without doing your research. I just would not. All right, last two sales of this period were on the 20th. The first one was this pair of Splendid, um, which I believe is the brand sold at Anthropology. It was the Foley Crisscross Espadrille Sandal in a size seven and a half. These had actually been listed since March. They sold for $31. I sourced these from Style Encore for $11.11. .11. .11. And so with shipping discount, I ended up making $11.23. 
The last item in this period was a pretty good sale. It was this pair of Keen Whisper Purple Waterproof Hiking Sandals in a size 10. Uh, they were listed for only about three days. He's back. These sold for $46. This was an item that I got from Style Encore for $14.40. And so I ended up making $19.94 off of this pair of Keen hiking sandals. So someone came back for the end of the video. How sweet. So that's all I have for you today, guys. Like I said, I will be releasing a part two next week where I share the other half of my sales from July and another tool that has been a total game changer for my reselling business. Like I said earlier, if you guys are wanting to take your business to the next level, create efficiencies, and you want to try lists perfectly, please use my code SOULINSPIRED. It will not only help me, but you will get 30% off of your first month of trying it. I just hope this video provided you with some inspiration, some motivation, and some actionable steps that you can take to get back on track and really make your reselling business more manageable. Whether you are part-time or full-time, we have all been there and we could all use different strategies. So once again, big shout out to Sarah Styles LLC for really helping me with her content. With that guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll be seeing you soon.